obviously, you know, someone like Shar would leap onto that for its military applications. Oh, yeah. Of course, his, his, his character throughout the series mm. almost flirts with the idea of military. At one point, mm. it looks like he's left the military, mm -hmm. but then he returns. Uh, everybody who he's associated with kind of ends up in a bad way, <laughs> but he always survives, mm -hmm. which does not lend to uh, the idea that you want him working alongside you. Indeed. Because <laughs> everybody else who works alongside him dies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, it's actually one of the really smart things about the show is that they introduce this this, this antagonist who, of course, does not defeat the good guys. Um, and so he gets banished off to some tiny little area um, you know, way away from the front lines because he failed. Yeah. Which also lets him come back later. But it gives you, a again, a sort of a more realistic approach to that kind of a uh, story. Which is pretty smart. Yeah. That was, is 14 and 15? 14 and 15. Let's see. Okay, so that was this one over here. So this one needs exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> and Char is certainly one of the more complex characters in the show. He's got Sailor to deal with. He's got Amuro to deal with. Yeah. And he's got Zeon to deal with. It's also interesting because, I mean, Char is in his own way a patriot. Yeah. And he certainly agrees with the Zeon um, cause. He just kind of hates the zombies and wants to kill them. <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, we're we're assuming you've watched the entire Gundam series when when uh, you're watching this. Not the entire franchise. The entire franchise, yeah. It's just the original Mobile Suit Gundam series, which you may have noticed was not 50 episodes. Yeah, it was just shy of uh, that. What was it? Uh, 40. I keep thinking it was 43. It might 43 be a little more seems, than that. seems right. Yeah. Which was seemed like an odd number for anime series. Well, it was actually canceled. Uh, part way through, it, it did not get very good numbers. Um, folks were not tuning in to watch Gundam. No. Oh. So they actually cut its uh, its budget for the number of episodes it could do. And the result is they, uh, yeah, that didn't work out so well for them. Um, so they had to finish it up. Although the funny thing is, some believe, and I happen to be one of them, that that actually kind of turned out to be a good thing. Hmm. Because they really focused on getting through the plot in those last few episodes. Hmm. You know, there's It did move quite rapidly at that point. Sure does. Um, so so it, it, it didn't feel like bad battle of the day. It <laughs> felt like, okay, they're, they're, they're developing a whole bunch here. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I would have liked to have had more exposure to a number of characters. The two mm. new types from the Xeon side yeah. would have been more fun to explore their life and mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in a little bit more depth, but they, they died off so quickly. Yeah. And of course, and that first one being Lala. Lala. Lala soon. I couldn't help but think La La Land. Because <laughs> she, yes. she has such a different approach to battle mm -hmm. than everything else. It's very psychically based. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Obviously she is Indian, as in the continent of India. Um, they make that quite clear in her character design, which gives her a... and so they give her sort of a more Hindu approach mm. to the, the whole conflict. Now, does she have the dot of fidelity there? She sure does. And... Interestingly, she is also completely besotted by Char Aznable. Yeah. <laughs> because he apparently rescued her out of some kind of poverty. Impressionable young woman. Yep, exactly. Um, just so you all know, this will not be the first impressionable uh, girl that Char takes under his wing for, <laughs> uh, for his own purposes. <laughs> and that's all I'll say about that. 
So, 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 were his purposes of? Uh, uh, did he have more than one purpose in mind as doing that? Well, that's an interesting thing. I mean, you know, Uala obviously he rescued because she has these very strong new type abilities, and so he wanted to use her as a weapon in his war. But he also clearly cared for her. Yeah, uh, that, and 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 that's that's evident when she. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, you know, again, it's one of the neat things about the show is that they show that human beings can feel and do mul um, things for multiple reasons. It's kind of one of the, the key themes of the show is that, you know, you can fight for a war for one reason and kind of have different views on that as time goes on. Well, Shard does some really strange things mm. uh, early earlier in the series. Mm -hmm. he, he tries to buy off his sister and tell her, leave the battle. He yeah. doesn't say, come over to my side. <laughs> he says, leave the battle. Disappear yeah. from all this mm -hmm. nonsense. Here's money. Here's gold. Get mm -hmm. out of here. So, he knows that there's potential for damage on mm. their side. Yep. But that that's not really his main goal. And he keeps his, his motivation somewhat guarded until closer to the end. Yeah. And there's always this question of did Shar do this because he had specific plans of what was going to happen? Or was it because simply he saw, oh my gosh, my sister is fighting for the other side. Mm -hmm. I want to get her away from the front line as quickly as possible. Yeah, it seems, it seems that he, he, he behaves more as an opportunist. Yes. Uh, taking whichever uh, path works towards his goal mm -hmm. and his advantage. Yep. And he's extremely good at that. Um, does that go in that way, or no, it goes in the other way. C10 and C11. Hmm, I see. <laughs> it's one of the, the smart things about how they built his character is that they don't present him as a grand strategist, as this person who um, can just outthink anyone, which is a, a common thing to do for antagonists in these sorts of shows. Mm. Instead, he, like you say, he's an opportunist. He has... Um, ideas and things he can do and approaches he can take um, and he just kind of capitalizes on chances. Uh, it's one of the reasons why he is such an effective soldier. You know, Shar is the kind of person that uh, were I a soldier I'd want to fight under him. Yeah. As, as, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't have to, want to have to command him because yeah. those guys. <laughs> no. Yeah. He, he, does, he does have some good leadership qualities. Mm. Definitely. Oh, oh, so. snapped apart. Oh, no. Yeah. I should, have, I should have snipped rather than uh. twisting to remove it. But that happens. Yeah. So, it? uh, it's in my lap. My gosh. Yeah, there's a small oh, sphere at yeah. the end there uh, of this piece. Okay. It well, at least that's, that's, like that. that's not a uh, um, joint. Yeah. So, ah, it stinks. So one of these, one of these times, I will learn all the <laughs> skills of, of doing this to the nth degree. Have my super magnifying microscope. There we go. So each each time I do modeling, mm -hmm. I always learn something new. Mm -hmm. And uh, doesn't mean I always practice what I've learned. <laughs> Sometimes I relearn the same lesson. <laughs> mm. Always something new to learn. I was at uh, uh, Caverns the other day, and they were saying that there was a uh, an Indian man there, uh, as in the continent, who uh, at one point was overheard and saying to his son, never pass up an opportunity to learn. Oh, yeah. And they said, yep, that's, 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 that's exactly right. Those are great values. Mm -hmm. That is A8 and A5. I'm getting the right ones. A. Where does it say A? A, A. yep. Yay! Yay! Yeah, Char is a quite interesting character. So now, I've seen this first series, mm -hmm. and I'm excited. Mm. You uh, about these characters mm. uh, and these stories. Mm. Now, the Gundam franchise 
is quite extensive. Oh, yes. Uh, and you were telling me that there's some more Gundam series that include characters from this series? Mm hmm Yeah. So, being this being the first Gundam series, there were a number of sequels, and it's actually quite nice about that, because you get sort of the continuation of this this story in this universe. Um, eventually, they sort of split off and started doing stories set in other universes. So they kind of reboot from scratch. Nice. Oops. Cool. And they would do that. And then, um, so yeah, so the sequel to this is called Zeta Gundam. Zeta. Mobile suit Zeta Gundam. Uh, which features, about half of the cast is new, and about half return from original Gundam. Hmm. In various combinations. Um, and uh, I will say no more about that, because part of the fun is seeing how these characters show up. <laughs> and what they're doing now, so to speak. Um, so where are they now? <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. What, is, what the heck is this? Uh, PCB and PCK. Oh, I already have that. So that's... So that's the letter F. Where's that's A? A can I really gonna fit there? Apparently. B. And I'm looking for E. Okay, so A B there. There we go. And then that's gotta be the other way around. E. Um, well there's the big No, nope, that's good. Right, right. Okay. You live in your life. Uh yeah, so there's Zeta Gundam. And then there is, after that, Double Zeta Gundam. Zeta Gundam and Double Zeta. Mm -hmm. uh, featuring rather different characters. Uh, again, some returning characters, some not. And then from there you go on to things like Victory Gundam, which is set much further in the future. So unless somebody has some... Unusual genes, they're not going to survive that long. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, in fact, one of the characters in Victory Gundam is possibly the, I think, great-grandson of Char. Ooh. He's kind of hinted at as a possibility. Um, that. Yeah, granddad told me about these. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's, there's those two. E14, E15. Oh. Alright. Um... And then, of course, there are, there, there are a bunch of different uh, OVAs, or miniseries, mm -hmm. set in this franchise. But they don't really continue this story much. Although, the one big thing that did was uh, a movie that came out in 1988, I believe, called Char's Counterattack. Oh, a movie. A movie. And, uh, as you can imagine, Char's in it. <laughs> By his counterattack. Mm-hmm. And this was the... Um, the attempt for Gundam, the Gundam franchise, to really do a big budget, you know, high quality um, anime movie. Mm. And so they really poured a lot of time and effort into making that movie look gorgeous. And th this is back in the days when they had cell animation? Yep, all cell animation. And there's some so really... hand done. Wow. Completely hand done. And there are some wonderful moments in Char's Counterattack, particularly the ending, which no, I won't spoil. <laughs> um, so it has an iconic ending. And uh, really interesting. I would not watch Char's Counterattack until after watching Zeta. What about Double Zeta? Um, Double Zeta does introduce some other elements, but well, what happened behind the scenes is that. The, while they were working on Double Zeta, they got the money to make the movie. That uh, Char's counterattack. So some elements that were going to happen in Double Zeta got sort of rewritten and reworked for Char's counterattack. Um, so it is a uh, an original story that is set after Double Zeta, but really doesn't use those characters because that story kind of got finalized while they were still working on Double Zeta. Um, so you don't really need to see Double Zeta. It's helpful. But it doesn't really add much of anything, uh, at least to the plot of Shara's counterattack. And you get to see uh, how things work out with, with those characters and uh, with, with Shara. Um, kind of a, a, a continuation of Shara's story. 
Michael Schar is, 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 is so entertaining because he's not fitting into the molds and mm -hmm. he behaves in ways that are very different. And his sister, <laughs> his sister <laughs> also mm -hmm. uh, behaves in ways that are uh, not very um, mold fitting, so to speak. No. Uh, of course, she has, uh, I don't know, I'd say courage or stupidity to go and pilot the... <laughs> Pilot without really mm. having done more than uh, simulations. Yeah. And she realizes, oh, yes, there are G forces that are <laughs> not accounted for in the simulations. Mm -hmm. So when she first uh, uh, pilots the Gundam, mm. she hits the dirt. She sure does. She's right out of the starting gate, bam! Mm. <laughs> and that's an interesting moment because if you go back and look at it, and folks know that I have a sort of a complicated relationship with. Uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, um, and so this this is not nothing against that show, but when she hits the dirt, there's a moment that I swear was then sort of um, that, that Evangelion made a callback to hmm. in uh, I believe episode one. So this show. predates. Oh yes, it predates Evangelion by fifteen years. Fifteen years. So so when when the creators of e Evangelion was mm. were, were were out designing things. This was something that had been well established and oh, very much so. Anime canon, so to speak. Definitely. In fact, I mean they um, they watched Gundam when it came out and were very impressed. They were they were among the the hardcore fans of Gundam um, and have, have very much you know they've always said that Gundam was one of their major inspirations for Evangelion. Um, along with some of the other works by the director, Yoshiyuki oh. Tomino. Um, so yeah, this, this was definitely a, a, an inspiration for them. The whole idea of a mobile suit. Mm. <laughs> a mobile, me mobile mechanized suit. Yeah. So it seems like an extension of the concept, uh, the medieval concept of, of having uh, armor it, it's. I'm. I'm very glad you put you pointed that out because the idea that Sunrise came up with is that, you know, to that point, a Gundam moves like a man wearing armor. You know, the, the way that shifts around has that sort of heavy motion mm. of somebody who's weighted down by that armor, as someone wearing, wearing that kind of stiff, stiff metal. Mm. Um, and so the 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 Gundam is is very much, and you're absolutely right. It is a, not just a suit of armor. Um, it is kind of an extension of the the wearer, the the pilot. One of the things that Gundam helps to establish is this idea that the um, the the giant robot is a metaphor hmm. for the character, the pilot, having responsibilities and having things that Ooh. they have to do. You know, the, the the Gundam is basically a metaphor for growing up. That you now have these responsibilities that you have to to do, and they suck a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. But that's something you just have to live with. As we see in the bright slap, I mean that was a that was absolutely a moment of, of Amaro refusing the responsibilities, re refusing adult responsibilities. Now, what was the bright slap? I remember that happening. So that was when Amaro refuses to pilot. And says, "Just I'm not gonna pilot anymore." Huh. And Bright charges down to Amaro's room while oh, uh, Frau yes, is there, yes. actually, and uh, slaps <laughs> Amaro right up. Whereupon Amaro gives the now famous reply, "You hit me. My you own father me. never even hit me." Oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Whereupon he replies, well, maybe if he did, you wouldn't complain so much. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty harsh. Uh, but that is, a, I mean, and, and again, it's one of the reasons why the show is so, was kind of shocking in its day. Because it did not portray piling a giant robot as fun. Hmm. You know, it wasn't this neat adolescent thing, or this neat even childish thing. Oh gosh! I get to go and fight off these these bad guys. This is a serious piece of equipment designed yep. for serious work. Yep. Um, this is not a toy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, which is actually one of the reasons for the the way the Turn A Gundam is 